Another approximation that is useful in a particular circumstance is when a Poisson distribution has a very large mean. And again, it turns out we can replace that by the normal. So this is the normal approximation to the Poisson. And this is when the mean, lambda, itself is large. And then we can replace this by a normal distribution with mean lambda, clearly because this is the mean of the Poisson, they have the same mean. So the mean equals lambda, and it turns out that the variance of a Poisson distribution is lambda squared, and so, so is lambda, and so the standard deviation is the square root of lambda. So given that parameter for the Poisson, the mean, we can find the mean and the standard deviation of the replacement normal distribution. So let's have an example of that. Suppose, for example, defects occur in a water pipe at a rate of 25 kilometres, 25 defects per kilometre. So on average, each kilometre of water pipe has 25 defects. But these are not regularly spaced, they're occurring randomly. Some kilometres might have very few defects, some might have rather more. But the average number over the whole length of the pipe is 25. So we want to find, for example, the probability that a particular kilometre has less than 18 defects. Um, number of defects is less than 18. Strictly speaking, that's a, um, a Poisson, so it's going to be e, it's going to be the probability of naught or 1 or 2 or 17. We'd have to go all the way up. So although the individual Poisson formulae are not too complicated, we'd have to do 18 separate calculations and add them together to get that total probability. And this is where the normal distribution can be so useful because it effectively does all the adding up uh, in one go to find the whole area under the graph. So let's see how we do this. We have the mean is 25 lambda. And the standard deviation is the square root of lambda, which is 5. And so the probability that x is less than 18, <coughs> we convert to the standard normal distribution. So we convert to z, and we take away the mean and divide by the standard deviation. But as before, we need to be aware of the continuity correction. What does 18 really mean? 18, we're here, at a mean of 25. What does 18 mean? Well, really, it's anything from 17.5 to 18.5. That area is all of 17, sorry, all of 18. We want to be below that. So we want that area. Again, the problem is that we're going from a discrete distribution, the Poisson, to a continuous one. So on the discrete one, you either have 17 or 18 or 19. But now we've got a continuous axis, we have to be a bit more careful. So we want z to be less than 17.5 take away the mean, divide by the standard deviation, and that comes to the probability that z is less than minus 1.5. And if we look that up, we get 0 0.0668, or 6.68%. 
So that's the probability of getting less than 18 defects when the average is 25. And so we can see that the normal distribution has enabled us to add up 17 plus 16 plus 15, etc., all the way down to zero. And this works well, this gives us a good accurate answer, as long as lambda is reasonably large. So in practice, anything much over 10, and you'll get reasonably accurate answers. So this is the normal approximation to the Poisson. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.